I'm doing the wave. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, big wave. I'm back. <laughs> uh, again, another unplanned live stream. Well, not unplanned. I knew I wanted to do something like this. And I've uh, had a little bit of time uh, open up. So that's a good reason to do something like this. It's an opportunity for me to talk about... Uh, let me bring this up. I had the VPix logo in there. Opportunity for me to talk about, obviously, Neil Peart dying. Peart, I hate saying it. <laughs> Neil Peart dying. Um, and, yeah, my thoughts on Rush... And this month on my Patreon group, we have been focusing heavily on drums. Because as you will have seen if you watched my New Year's resolution video, I am putting a lot more time and effort into my drumming. So uh, it's been a long time since I've practiced guitar. It's been a long time since I've really done any practice on, of anything. And I, but I love practice. Uh, it's just, you know, progress is much harder on guitar, right? I can make progress on drums a lot faster now. So I have been spending a lot more time, every single day in fact, practicing drums for a decent amount of time. So I wanted to make this month's transcription challenges all drum related, right? Um, which is an interesting subject because a lot of guys don't know how to transcribe for drums, right? A lot of guitar players, my ma market is mainly guitar players of course, don't really know how to transcribe drum parts. So I figured that that was something that I could go back to do. It's something I've talked about in the past, but obviously it's something I also talk about very sparingly compared to the guitar-related stuff, because this is primarily a guitar-related channel, right? <laughs> um, so an opportunity to talk about uh, about Neil and an opportunity to talk about you know uh, Rush's music and how I've enjoyed Rush's music over the years, my introduction to Rush, but then also use it as, a, as an opportunity to help you guys learn uh, how to transcribe for drums. Now uh, I will be back of course at the end of the month to do my big monthly stream where I transcribe a bunch of stuff and that again will be largely drum focused. Uh, so this think of this as a primer if you like, so when it gets to that monthly stream, the end of the month stream, you will be in a better position to actually, um, you know, follow along and see what's see what's happening. So um, yeah, <laughs> the fun thing with this, or the frustrating thing, I should say, is uh, obviously what I do here on YouTube is uh, flies in the face of copyright. Uh, I always make a fair use argument, of course, because the whole point of this is it's it's literally educational, right? I am here and totally transforming the things that we're looking at. It's not. You know, you don't come to my channel to listen to the tracks that, I, that I'm that i using bits of, right? I don't usurp the market for the original track. Um, but copyright on YouTube is a, is a complicated game. So I used uh, just a tiny, like literally about 10 seconds of a clip on a live stream just yesterday or the day before. And the video immediately got flagged as soon as, as, soon as I stopped being live. So um, I'm trying to be careful with this stuff to you know to stop my channel having bother but it's unavoidable sometimes and uh, essentially you know youtube owns is owned by google i was going to say youtube owns google google owns youtube google owns just about everything right and the record labels have deals in place with youtube and therefore with google to protect their their copyrights which is understandable and i respect that uh if you want to use any websites or any sources that download content from YouTube as video or MP3, so I can work on it in these videos, for, you know, open it up and transcribe, etc. Uh, all those websites are are appear on Google search engines, right? And they all seem to have legal agreements in place that they won't allow you to download music. So it's getting harder and harder to download music from YouTube. <laughs> I thought this wouldn't be a problem in this case because here I'm downloading uh, drum tracks. I'm not looking at full tracks here. I'm literally ju just dealing with isolated drum tracks. And I had no problem downloading the Neil Peart stuff. Neil Peart. 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 Stay Peart. <laughs> I had no trouble downloading Neil stuff. But I also wanted to download something that would be very easy for us to look at. And the thing I looked at was um, Hotel California. Eagles Hotel California. And there's a great isolated drum track of that on YouTube. And I just could not download it. Like every single source that I went to to download it wouldn't allow me to download it. And yeah, it's uh, it's because, what, they Universal, I think, Universal? Universal are real tight with this type of thing. So, um, yeah, we've got some Neil stuff to look at, but I had to pick something else in place of the, um, what was it? Hotel California. I had to pick something else. It's got some Aerosmith, because why not Aerosmith, right? <laughs> anyway... Let me start loading things up. Uh, I will do the usual. 
This stream is brought to you by my supporters over on Patreon. If you would like to be one of those supporters, you can check me out in the link in the description and support me for as little as $1. This stream is also brought to you by my books, available on Amazon. Delta Blue slide guitar, slide guitar soloing techniques, and I guess more importantly, 100 slide licks for blues guitar. Totally not related to drums. I do appreciate that, fine. But it did just come out yesterday. Yesterday? What were we on Monday? Came out two days ago, so I wanted to make the opportunity to, for anyone that is unfamiliar, for anyone that is unaware, I should say, check that out, head to Amazon, look for Levi Clay, you'll find that book. You may enjoy it. You may not. <laughs> I would like to think you'll probably enjoy it. And of course, this stream is brought to you by my friends over at VPix. Right. Now, before I get on with transcribing, let's take a look at these comments. Let's see what's going on. Let's see who's online, and let's see what those people who are online have to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do be this first you are first well done how's it going <laughs> yeah those kmac transcriptions man they um the transcription is actually really fucking cool um i just thought it was really funny just we were transcribing things and going through things and uh every now and again like there'd just be this page of utter ease like just the easiest things in the world to play and um <laughs> i think kieran was half amused and half annoyed that i kept taking photos of uh incredibly easy things but i, I guess i can give you a teaser right if uh, uh we'll come back to that Y'all are all familiar with his song Imposter, which was reasonably good, reasonably popular. <laughs> um, so here's Imposter. I'm thinking the parts in this that are really fucking cool. Uh, to be honest, just the, the chords, the chorus chords. Uh, Because, of course, Guitar Pro handles it like a pro because um, they are super pro. <laughs> um, so those tabs will be out soon. Um, yeah, that was fun. I enjoyed that. Fun, fun thing, fun fact um, about the about the K-Mac stuff. He bought his uh, green Ormsby over here because he said, I don't imagine you will have a guitar tuned to what my guitar is tuned to. He has his six-string guitar tuned to drop F. <laughs> drop F? <laughs> oh, he's tuned down, what, a sixth? He's tuned, he tunes his high E string all the way down to a G, so it's like tuning down a sixth and then takes the final string, the low E string, down a further tone to put himself in uh, drop F. <laughs> Just uh, unbelievable. I'm like, dude, you're literally, you've got a sixth string that's literally tuned lower than an eight string. Why? <laughs> uh, Become the Knight and I are posting videos tomorrow on Rob Chapman and the latest event. Was, yeah, um, so Become the, the Knight reached out to me and asked that if I had any, you know, if I was willing to go on record. And I, I said, I'm more than happy to go on record if there's any way I can help, if there's any input that you need or if you want me involved in any way, shape or form, I'm happy to. Um, and he wanted to know, you know, private info that I might have from my dealings with Rob, but I said, to be honest, I've not actually had all that many personal dealings with Rob. So, um, but you know, as always, you know, if either of you guys need help with anything, if you, or if you want my input, I'm uh, happy to, happy to, uh, join in, happy to get involved. So anyway, let's keep reading. Jerry James Edwards. Good to see you online again, man. How's it going? Wagner Sanchez, rest in peace. <sighs> Philip Hopper. Sup, Levi. I try to catch your streams when I can. I'm a legend. Thank you very much, sir. Um, copyright issue is absolutely ridiculous. So here's a great question from Philip Hopper. Can YouTube take away Super Chat donations after a stream has finished? I don't actually know the answer to that, and it is something that absolutely pops into my mind, because obviously I did a stream yesterday, and someone was generous enough to Super Chat me uh, $30, $30, I think, uh, which, you know, very much appreciated. And... Uh, yeah, after I mean, YouTube take enough of their share from it anyway. But afterwards, I'd be very interested to see um, see what happens to that. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, so I know it's pit, but I struggle. It's like, so I live in Scotland, and there's a lot of uh, Scottish slang that I refuse to say because the, the words coming out of my mouth sound wrong. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I, I avoid doing them. Um, Jerry James Edwards says that uh, Universal Music Group are really hot on any use of Eagle stuff. And yeah, I totally get that, Jerry. The really interesting thing with this particular uh, situation, I should say, is I'm not looking to download 
Hotel California, right? I'm downloading an isolated drum track, so it's the stems of the drum track. So the fact that they have registered not just with the YouTube search algorithms, the you know the uh, the copyright algorithms, they they don't just have Hotel California as a whole on file. They have the individual tracks from their songs on file, which is I understand why. Again, it is copying um, it is protection of copyright, I guess. But uh, yeah, totally, um, t totally extreme if you ask me. Um, especially as you know, my only goal of it was to, for educational purposes to um, do some stuff. So James Shackelford says, in a couple of hours, you will have my latest book delivered. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I still don't have my copy delivered yet, my copies delivered yet. So you'll probably beat me to it. I should have mine. What day are we on? We're on Monday. Should probably be here tomorrow. Maybe, maybe, uh, uh, maybe Wednesday. But yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, right. Should we do some stuff? Should we talk about drums? Let me bring up the, uh, the screen. DWE92 asks, how did I end up in Scotland, if not too personal? personal. I said, I'm from Dan Saff. I am from Dan Saff. Um, there's a lot of Essex in my accent, right? There's a lot of uh, Landon, Landon in my accent, right? You fucking schlag. Um, <laughs> that's definitely very Romford. Uh, I was born in Ipswich, which is Suffolk. I went to college in Essex. I went to college in Colchester. Uh, I moved to London when I was, um, what, 18? <clears throat> I stayed there for almost 10 years uh, to do university and then I stayed there and I started work, I started my business there uh, and then I had an awful breakup and rather than being a grown up about it <laughs> and hanging around in the same town, I thought well the best way to get a clean break from a breakup is to move somewhere, <laughs> to just get out of the city also you know, the, you add in the additional pressure of London which is you need to earn four times as much as anywhere else in the country just to, to get by, let alone live comfortably uh, and I had some, uh, had a bunch of friends in Scotland, so I went, you know what, why don't I start a new life in, in Scotland? I had no real reason to remain um, in any one place, because my business is 95% online. You know, I lost a couple of my private in-person students. Uh, some of them switched over to Skype lessons, and some of them, you know, I recommended other teachers to. Um, but yeah, I, I'm fortunate in that my business is largely online, so I could live absolutely anywhere. And the people in Scotland are very good, so... Very nice, very nice people. So I moved to Scotland for that reason. Uh, and Stephen asked, how did I get into country music? Um, piracy. Piracy. When I was uh, much, much younger, living, I was still in Ipswich at the time, uh, I was at my girlfriend's house and someone sent me, a, I didn't have the internet in my house, this is the poverty I grew up in. <laughs> someone sent me a link to, uh, at the time, there was a site called Guitar Trade Blogspot. Um, and... I saw all these instructional videos that I'd seen in the shops, but, you know, I didn't have any money to buy these things. So I just went, oh, I've got to have all of this stuff. Um, so I just started downloading and downloading and downloading. I was just downloading stuff just to have it there, just so I could watch it if I ever wanted to. Um, and I downloaded Brent Mason's instructional video, the uh, Nashville Chops and Western Swing. It's called the Hot Licks video. And I watched that and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed, like, his sound. I uh, totally enjoyed the way he played. And that was a new thing to me. So I downloaded... Um, uh, his Hot Wired album and then started digging into some of the sessions that he'd played on so I started discovering players like you know uh, Alan Jackson's like one of my favourites of course um, but discovering all these players that he played with and just really loved what he did and then uh, I listened to a lot more traditional stuff I found out that my gran was into like Mel Haggard um, and Ernest Tubb uh, all of those kind of more traditional country names Johnny Cash obviously uh, all of those guys so that it didn't it was, certainly wasn't cool to me when I was younger uh, then I remember Brad Paisley's um, was it Fifth Gear Fifth Gear came out and I checked out some of the songs on that and that's much more um, uh, you know light hearted it's entertaining country but full of great guitar playing so that really and the production is great so I, I really got into um, I really got into uh, Jesus I saw something about Ipswich there and it's reminded me of stuff. I really got into Brad Paisley's playing and then from there I just started taking country very, very, um, very seriously. So yeah, you know, discovering bands like the Helicasters um, gets you into uh, Jerry Donahue and um, John Jorgensen and you, you know what you know what I'm getting at. And you discover <laughs> when you first sit and watch videos of Albert Lee, you're just like, this is insane. <laughs> so that's how I got into country. 
many nights at the Spread Eagle in Ipswich. Lots of my mates went to uni there. Ah, Ipswich. Ah, the Spread Eagle. <laughs> I'm not there anymore, thankfully. I've not been to Ipswich in, I don't know, 15 years. Um, hey Levi, nice to see some drumming being transcribed. Being a drummer for nine years before I touch the guitar, you'll probably be better. You'll probably be watching this, embarrassed at some of the things I say. Then, <laughs> always wanted to play drums. What would a good traditional kit and electric kit for beginners be? Asking anyone who's willing to offer some advice. I can't give you um, any great answers to that, a camp, because I'm not a great drummer. <laughs> uh, I think all of those things depend on budget, right? I'm using the uh, Alesis Crimson kit, which is an electric kit with mesh heads on it. I wanted to get the, what is it, the Roland V, V drum set, uh, but that was a lot more expensive, so I just sort of went for something that was priced, you know, um, in, in a sensible tier for what my use was going to be, um, but I couldn't give you advice on, you know, if there are better options. Um, yeah, Brad is that link between classic and modern country, uh, and it's interesting because Brad is a great example of country, right? Because if you listen to his stuff, his sound has changed so much over the years. If you listen to his last few albums, I think they're all garbage because they sound too pop. They are just pop. But if you go back to Brad Paisley's first album, Who Needs Pictures, um, there that is a country album through and through. He sings like a country singer. The band plays like a country band. Um, you know, I, the first track is Long Sermon, I'm sure. Um, you know, baritone guitar right at the start of it. And just such a... Di it's like a different man. Um, so, yeah, you know, my taste in Brad albums is definitely skews more towards the early albums. Um, what's my favourite Brad Paisley album? It's a tough one. I think I like Part 2. Part 2's got a lot of really good songs on it. Um, for the longest time, it was time well wasted, though. Um, so, there you go. Uh, video, I don't like Mbali's songs. Uh, and he's playing in general. How come? It's it's more that I don't like his compositions. I like his playing. I do like his, his approach to playing, but I don't like his... Um, how would I put it? Like his, his taste in instrumentation, his taste in orchestration. Um, I find his music, uh, not that I don't listen to it, let me be clear about that, I've got Thunder from Down Under in my car at the moment, <laughs> and there's a lot of stuff that I really dig on that, but sometimes it gets a little cheesy for me, and you have to remember that I grew up, I grew up as a, you know, rock and metal kid, I was talking to the wife about this on the, uh, when we went out for dinner this evening, um, that was, I was the rock and metal kid when I was younger, and I wanted heavy bands, and then when it wasn't heavy bands, it was melodic prog bands like symphony x which are still pretty metal yeah <laughs> um and then you compare that to like a lot of the harmonies that you have going on with frank stuff which is it's funny because when you listen to thunder from down under there's bunches there's there's a lot of moments on there where he's playing like a jazz player but he's playing with a lot of distortion there's absolutely no vibrato on some of his some of the melodies in that and as a rock player that sounds very alien to me so it wasn't a sound that really appealed to me um but in terms of the contour of his lines and some of the lines he plays i think a lot of them are, are pretty pretty cool so, um, yeah. Please transcribe Osnoy's Jelly Blue for us all. I love Osnoy. Um, anyway, right. Should we should we take a look at this stuff? Should we do some stuff? Should we do some stuff? Right. Uh, what is this? This is... Oh, the Billy Strings thing from the other night. Okay. Um, so on the subject of Rush, this is worth pointing out, actually. Um, I have been tra actually transcribing Rush just recently. Um, here you can see I'm 21 pages into the guitar part of uh, Cygnus X1. So for any Rush fans out there, I mean, that's a little bit boring, right? But if I go, hear that if you don't hear that and go it, yeah uh, all these harmonic things which is fun and uh, what's my favorite part of this this is a long transcription oh it's got to be this riff hasn't it the uh, that
Mm. I like that. So Rush, um, definitely a band that I enjoy, have enjoyed for a long time. Let me reformat this so we've got things in the right way so you can see things. Now, because I'm just working from audio in this, I can have my face in big at the bottom. <laughs> Uh, right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go File, New, and I'm going to go to Drums in Guitar Pro, and I'm going to use Drum Kit. I'm going to create Drum Kit. We just want Notation, not Tab. I'm not going to deal in Tab at all. I've not actually checked what we have for sounds. Oh, okay, cool. So there are some different there are some different sounds. That's kind of cool. Um, and Signature Sounds. Look at that. Oh, look at that. There's a bunch of sounds. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'll test. What, I'll see what some of those look like in a second. Uh, we will deal with this in a minute. Go okay, right. So I need to open our track, and then we'll talk about drums as a whole. Uh, where the hell is all this stuff? So what I've got is uh, Tom Sawyer. I've got Neil's playing on Tom Sawyer. Mainly because I I, I know a lot of Rush fans are going to listen to that and say, well, that's a bit um, that's a bit pop, and it and it is very pop, right? Uh, and Rush certainly have a lot of that pop stuff. Um, I also transcribed Natural Science for someone just recently, and um, that's cool, right? Um, that's proggy. <laughs> but yeah, I had to go with the isolated drum tracks that we had access to, um, and of course, it's a, it's a decision, right? Of course, I could be working with actual tracks. I could be working with the original uh, recorded tracks for these, like the the album recordings for these things, but. As I would assume most of you guys aren't specifically um, drummers, like myself, right? Um, we don't want the added complication of having to work out what the drums are doing um, in relation to the rest of the music, right? If we can, where possible, if we can isolate, if we can eliminate, I should say, the rest of the band, the rest of the complications, the rest of the, the, rest of the sounds, and have you just focus on... Oh, does that work? Oh, wow, that was quite effective. And have you focus on just the sound of the drums? It's going to be easier for us, right? Um, let's take a look at this. Uh, I don't really want an electric kit. I want to be able to play late at night. Spend about a thousand. Okay. Thousand dollars. Okay, thousand uh, dollars. Go for an acoustic kit if you can. Anything from Gretsch, vintage kits. Uh, rock and metal kids never grow up, they just get older. <laughs> I love that, Nick. <laughs> Um, yeah. Good evening. Isn't losing your mind a big part of becoming a drummer, though? Every drummer I've ever met was an absolute nut, I'll be in a good way. Everyone I've ever met that played in any band whatsoever, apart from bass players, are always nuts. <laughs> uh... Similar experience myself. Drummers tend to be a little unhinged. <laughs> Have you ever transcribed uh, Walter Beck and Steely Dan stuff? Real hard time picking chords out on their stuff. Um, Steely Dan have never been a band that I've hugely been influenced by, so I've never transcribed any by choice. It's never been things that I've like gone, oh, you know, I want to sit and transcribe that now. Um, I only tend to transcribe things like that when it's a job for a client, um, and I think it's only been like one one thing um that i've ever had to do um from that my seven sharp five am i going to finish my drum transcribing period with a dave weckl or steve smith transcription i mean potentially like when i was younger i was really 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 into drum education and learning the idea of getting better at drums and i spent so much so much time with steve smith in particular watching um as many of his educational things as i possibly could um, I thought he was cool as shit. <laughs> Scott Cassidy from East Kilbride. I still think Steve Smith is cool as shit. So, yeah. Maybe. Probably not that. <laughs> right. So, um, let's talk drums in Guitar Pro, because I think that's a, an important place to start. So, when you're writing drums in Guitar Pro, it's very much like writing drums in any other software, any other notation software. We're working with notation, not tab. We want to work with notation. This will make things easier for you. Now, when you know which light, like it's like, you know, if you're reading treble clef, you know, I'm going to zoom right in on this actually. When you're reading treble clef, you know that this space is F. You know that this is a G. You know that this is an E. You know that this is an A, etc. Right? You learn, you get those associations with what each, um, 
space or line means. You need to do the same thing with drums, right? So as a transcriber, as someone that deals with music notation, I know that this space is a snare drum, okay? I know that traditionally this will be a kick drum. I know that traditionally this will also be a kick drum. Now, whether Guitar Pro matches up with those you know, expectations is, is um, up for debate. <laughs> I know that this is going to be a crash cymbal. And there, well, it should be. There's my hi-hat. That's a china. Um, yep, cool. Right, fine. Now, trying to map these out in Guitar Pro like this by, by just finding out what they all are is going to take you a long time. So as a tool, if you come up to the top right here, we've got show or hide drum kit view. Now when I do that, what we now get is each of those sounds. And it shows us how to access them, how we can play them. Now interestingly, what you're going to see down the bottom here is all of these sounds, right? Well, they don't, they don't all correspond to actual things on there. So here we can see that they have the snare rim shot because that highlights here when you do it but when i look at say um a bell tree hit you know that information isn't actually contained up here anywhere i'm not entirely sure what happens if i click it yeah so you can put it in but it's it's just going to put it in like that and do something stupid so we don't want to do that type of thing <laughs> um guitar pro again gu guitar is kind of in the name right this is very much pitched at guitarists <laughs> so this is I, I would never say that well yeah, I'd absolutely never, if somebody came to me wanting a, a drum transcription and they were an actual drummer, I wouldn't write anything out in Guitar Pro, okay? The skills that I'm trying to arm you with here as guitar players is the, the skill to be able to write things out to either, um, you know, analyse a song that you like and to get an idea of why you like it, or to add some drums behind a riff that you're, that you're writing or whatever it happens to be, right? This is drum understanding from the perspective of a guitar player. So you can actually use this if you want. If you need to put a snare in, you can literally come up here, find snare, click this, and that's going to put a snare in. Or you could come down here and you could find snare, and you could hit that. If you wanted a snare with a side stick, or if you wanted a the rim shot, will be over here. Yeah. If you want the rim shot. And here's my regular snare. So I'm kind of impressed that Guitar Pro has that um, distinction between those things. <laughs> but yeah, in essence, um, it's important that we have that basic understanding. Now, I, will, I appreciate that there are probably many of you out there that have no idea what all of this stuff is, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring up a drum kit, just so we can see a drum kit. In fact, if I bring up Easy Drummer or Superior Drummer, Probably be the easiest way to do this. It's going to take a second. There we go. Now I don't think you will hear the sounds for these uh, because software sucks. Um, oh, you do. Perfect. Wonderful. So let's get a bigger kit, right? Uh, let's go for a heavy metal rock kit and let's go for the big hard rock kit. That's almost the same size. Let's go for the big jank kit. There we go. Big kit. Lots of drums. Okay. Lots of drums, lots of cymbals, etc. etc. <laughs> um, in order to transcribe for drums, we need a, a reasonable idea of what drums are and what does what. Okay. There's not a whole lot that we need to deal with for the most part. Really, you could strip a kit down to uh, three, potentially four pieces. Uh, you know, I could teach you a song like Monkey Wrench by the Foo Fighters, and you are going to need four pieces of this kit. You're going to need a hi-hat, a bass drum, a snare drum, and a crash cymbal. There are no tom hits in that song. Um, you can get by with just the one cymbal. You'll be absolutely fine, okay? Um, right, so what do we have? Well, here we have our snare drum. Now we can think of this snare drum sound as being the, the steering wheel that sits in front of us. This is the core sound, if you like. This is the aggressive 
crack sound that you often hear on beats two and four of a song that drives that song forward. Against that, you have our kick drum or our bass drum. Not the best sounding bass drum. Reverb's a bit extreme. I mean, reverb's a bit extreme on the snare. Anyway, kick drum, snare drum, kick drum, snare drum, kick drum, snare drum. <clears throat> Minus 7 sharp 5. Transcribing drums is not harder at all if you play drums, right? Because you have an understanding of how drums work, uh, what drums are. You have an understanding of hearing things and go, oh, I know what that is. Um, most guitar players just don't have that understanding of what they are. So anyway, kick drum, snare drum. Now the other thing that we would probably introduce is a hi-hat, right? Uh, how do I make it closed? Can't click that. This is our hi-hat, it's controlled with a pedal, and if I come up here and click hi-hat closed... There you go. Gives you an idea of what a hi-hat sounds like, right? <laughs> Right, uh, I can mute myself when I need to sneeze. <laughs> right, now, um, that alone, kick drum, snare drum, and hi-hat is enough to play a lot of grooves, right? A simple, um, if we listen to something like this. Classic rock type groove, right? What I really hear when I listen to that is bass, snare, bass, bass, snare, bass, snare, bass, bass, snare. Um, that, if I do bass, snare, bass, bass, snare, bass, snare, bass, bass, snare, kick, snare, kick, kick, snare, boo, ka, boo, boo, ka, boo, ka, boo, boo, ka. And then over the top of that, the leading hand, the right hand, is playing a hi hat and it's going t t t t t t t t t Now he puts a little bit of sizzle on one of those hits at the end of every two bars by lifting up that hi-hat hi pedal just a little bit so you get like a semi-open hi-hat. But at its very core, that is most of what we're going to be dealing with with drums, right? And that's how I'm going to be processing things. I'm going to be processing things as what does our leading hand play with? So is it an open hi-hat? Is it a closed hi-hat? Apparently it closes when I do that. Now it's closed. No idea why it closed, but fine. <laughs> uh, is there a way for me to open that? That really doesn't matter. <laughs> um, yeah, the only other thing that was in that is we had a crash symbol on beat one. Fine, cool. Outside of that, we have tom toms. Now, these are pitched drums that descend in pitch. You're going to hear these in fills. Outside of that, sure, there's a bunch of other, you know, different sized crash symbols. Like, there's a ride symbol, and I think I could change these out. Uh, if I wanted, I'll probably change this out. Give me the option to put a splash. There you go. So I'll put a splash symbol in there. Got China over here. Is there a bigger China? There is a big 20 inch China if I want it. Really aggressive sound, right? The more you spend uh, listening to drums and listening to drummers speak, the more of an idea you're going to have, more of an understanding you're going to have of different drums and different cymbals and what they sound like, right? But here's the key thing. Here's the, the really important thing that I have to stress. If I go um, Neil Peart drums... Let's get with that. So if we have a look at this, if we have a look at this kit, okay? <laughs> just thinking about this, just looking at this, right? What do you think the chances are? Probably shouldn't have clicked it, should I? Here we go. What do you think the chances are with all of these toms, a seat that goes all the way around, all of these symbols, well, how many toms have we got here, right? You know what I'm getting at, right? There's so many, this kit, Neil's kits, are so unbelievably big, right? 
so unbelievably big that we can't ever hope that Guitar Pro or any notation software for that matter is going to be able to do a great job of notating drums notating your drums accurately in fact it's usually very important that you can have access to some sort of um, key if you like drum key to tell you what each of these lines and spaces are going to do when you're looking at a transcription because if you're transcribing somebody who has i just worried i didn't turn my voice back on there yeah i did if you're transcribe transcribing somebody who has you know 12 different tom symbols <laughs> um you you can't hope to get a good job of notating that right i'm trying to think of uh, other drummers that have ridiculous ridiculous uh, drum kits let's have a look um <laughs> when you look up ridiculous drum kits you tend to um you tend to get uh Lots of Neil uh, Neil Peart pictures. <laughs> Which is why, to be honest, I quite like looking at someone like Benny Greb who will play with next to nothing and, and play fantastically right it's great looking at Thomas Lang huge kit um, does a lot with it but then you can go to someone who's I'm not saying that Thomas Lang couldn't play on uh, on a tiny kit of course but yeah there's something really classy about someone that plays uh, with a very small um, small kit oh here's a <laughs> here's a laughable drum kit right Oh fuck yeah, Terry, Terry Bozio's kit. That's a great example, actually. Um, when you look at a kit like this, I fucking hate Pinterest. Go away. I don't want to log in to see I want you to die. Oh, careful. Rob Chapman hates it when you say that. Well, if you look at a kit that has this many toms, nothing's going to be able to notate this well, right? Nothing's going to notate that well. Uh, if we look at... Look at this thing. Look at it. You're not going to be able to notate that. It's just not going to come close to uh, being something that you'll be able to notate comfortably. Look at it. That's obscene. Look at it. You're not going to be able to notate this. It's uh, accurately, at least. Look how many drums there are. There aren't enough, like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 26, 27. I can see at least 27 toms there. At least 27 toms. So that, you know, coming back to this, if we're going to have to notate that, how many, there's 20, I don't have 27 options, right? That's just toms. <laughs> That's ignoring my snare, my d different bass drums, and the sheer amount of fucking symbols the, the guy has, right? It's... That's cool, I like that, but what I'm getting at is we need to operate within the limitations of the software that we're working in, and nowhere is that truer than Guitar Pro. Anyway, with that out of the way, let me read some let me read some uh, comments, and then we will actually transcribe, transcribe some stuff. Yeah, you two are talking at each other, <laughs> which is good. Holy cow, xylophone, Terry, yeah. Gavin Harrison, he has big kits. Mike Mangini has a huge kit. Simon Phillips, yeah. Nobody has a bigger kit than Terry. Chad, Marco, Simon. Want the biggest drum transcribing challenge? Uh, try the black page from Frank Zappa. Yeah. No, I know. I mean, uh, yeah, I know the black page well. Bigger is better. <laughs> yeah, that's just silly. <laughs> How can less be more? More is more. <laughs> and Honkler says those are like the drum equivalent of a 24 string guitar. Exactly, right? Um, oh yeah, of course, that would be a smarter way of doing it, Jason Bourne. What are you doing watching my stream? Shouldn't you be saving the world somewhere? <laughs> Dark Raven Project, hello. Right, with that in mind, right, when I go and I look at uh, Walk This Way, the um, Aerosmith tune. Uh, let me bring myself up so I can see what I'm doing. want to make sure I don't miss...
Okay. So I don't really need this, but I'm going to put it like down here for reference, okay? When we listen to Aerosmith's Walk This Way, I'll slow it down. Now, if we just take one of those bars, and we listen to what's really going on here, we have a collection of things happening at the same time. If I mark it out, so we've actually got measure markers in there. If we were to just begin with the bass drum and the snare drum, bo ka bo 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 ka, boom ka bo boom boom ka, boom ka bo boom boom ka, one two e and a three and four, da 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 da. Da, 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 da. There's our bass and uh, snare pattern, right? If I wanted to put that in, I could just put that in. This thing annoys me. I will bring it back if I need it or if I want to make reference to it. So just that part. Bass drum on beat one. Snare drum on beat two. This lasts for three sixteenth notes. Then we go back to that kick. Bum, ka, ba. Bass, bass, snare. There's our basic pattern of what's going on among the accenting part of the kit, if you like. I think of it as like that, the bass and the snare. We'll deal with the, the lead hand in a second. But just that alone, if I put this at like 80, let's go with 80 just so you can hear it. If I just take that and loop it, I'm interested to see what those other kits sound like in Guitar Pro. Let's see if we can do that. Apparently the um, apparently the rock kit has almost no reverb decay on it. It just immediately dies. That's not a nice sound, is it? Well, let's hope you let's hope you need delay on your kick drum. Book, book, book. That's terrible. Wow. I know I <laughs> I don't know if this is just a case of me um being so exposed to the stock uh sound for drums in Guitar Pro, but the only one of those that is slightly serviceable to me is just regular boring drum kit. Anyway, now we've got that part that bottom part, if you like. If we then go back and we listen to what the right hand is doing. There's an open hi-hat. That's our sizzle. Tss. And then from there, he closes the hi-hat and continues with an eighth note pan. So I'll just write that part out just for you, just so you can see that. Let's bring this up. So you'd use this as a reference. We can use... Uh... Wow, that sounds like garbage. Half. Let's go with half. <laughs> okay, that'll do. That's all the right hand is doing. Right? Simple. These two things essentially happen at the same time. Now here's where transcribing for drums, drums can get complicated. I would prefer, personally, I would prefer to separate these by taking this and putting this in the second voice here. 
So you have it notated like this. Make that an open. Let's get rid of this now. Personally, that's how I like to have my drums notated. I'll go into here and I beam these uh, so they beam as eighth notes like that. That's absolutely how I like to have my drums notated. But some people, including drummers, like there's no right or wrong way, it's a personal touch thing, personal taste thing. Some people would happily take this. Voice one. Let me zoom out just a bit so I can see both. And they would put this bass drum snare pattern in that same voice. So you would have this. My bad, my bad. Um, ignore me. You want that there. You want that, sorry, yeah. My mistake. Right, so now what I've done here is I've got two things that essentially say the same thing. <laughs> um, on the left, I've split those two parts out across two voices with the bass and snare stems pointing down and the hi-hat or lead hand with the stems pointing up. In this version I've put them all in one voice. If you listen to this, that's going to sound identical to this. So, yeah, these are absolutely identical with each other in terms of uh, the, the way they would be performed. It's a personal taste thing, I think, as to which of these you would prefer to use. To me, the reason I lean towards this one is because it makes it a little bit clearer. I can really process this bottom rhythm, boom, ka, ba, boom, boom, ka, more than this one where I have to think, boom, ka, where does this fall in relation to the thing that's happening? at the same time. Of course, you could make the argument that it's very clear that these two things happen at the same time, and these two things happen at the same time, etc. Um, but you kind of get that with the fact that these are lined up anyway, right? So, you know, there's not a... Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's not a one, one way to do this. Uh, both are valid. I don't look down at anyone that uses this. <laughs> Um, just like I don't think somebody knows what they're doing better when they do this. Personally, I prefer this, but as I mentioned in my um, New Year's resolution stream, where I mentioned that I've joined Drumeo, Drumeo do all of their notation like this. Fine, you know, they're drummers. And maybe the more and more I play, the more and more I play drums, maybe, maybe I'll lean towards this. You know, maybe I'll end up preferring this particular um, way of doing things. Who knows? We shall see. There are certainly things that uh, there are certainly pros and cons to both. I can think of things that I would write out using this method that would look a lot more confusing than just using this one. And likewise, I can think of things where you, if you try to write it using this, getting the definition between those two parts would be a pain in the ass, a real pain in the ass. <laughs> like for example, if you wanted uh, straight eighth notes on the top and you were playing triplets underneath, that would. Uh, although, you know, aside from being difficult to play, <laughs> that would also be difficult to notate and have it clear. Um, yeah, so so the second one is more helpful for me, to, to be honest. Um, seeing things in relation to the hi is a great argument, yep. Uh, some things really don't like it, computers especially, yeah. Um, you already survived how many fills? None, William, we've not done any yet, thankfully. <laughs> um, anyway, with that in mind... It's funny, the more and more I stare at that second one, the more and more I lean to it. I'm just going to uh, put out the intro to um, Walk This Way. So, now that, so that's the same thing played four times, right? One, two, three, four. Now at this point I'm going to zoom out so I can see what's going on. Um, what am I doing? I want that. Two bars. 
two bars. Okay, cool. So uh, this is like an, an intro, a pre-guitar intro, and then the we could put like a little double bar line in there. So intro with just drums, then guitar comes in. The guitar and bass, uh, sorry, the guitar and drums play their part twice. Uh, play, sorry, yeah, it's, it's a four bar thing. In the final bar, this is where the drums put their first fill in. The drummer puts their first fill in. I could have done my research and found out the name of Aerosmith's drummer, but you know, that would be like being pro, right? <laughs> so if we look at this. So the first two beats are identical. And then the second part, here's where we... Okay. So we still have our bass on the, on the three. We have a snare on the and of three. One, and, two, and. So we've got a, a hi hat. Damn it! Uh, I'm just going to voice one. Damn it! That went into voice one. Uh, put that in voice two. <laughs> now you can see the problem with this method. Uh, let's bring up the drum thing so I can see what uh, crash symbols I have at my disposal. I uh, want that, and then we want a crash symbol. So what do we have? I just don't think the crash symbol sounds very good. <laughs> That's terrible. It's like it's it's like such a, a big crash symbol. It's, there's no splash to it. There's no tss, there's no sizzle in it. It's just such a dramatic. Um, I imagine this crash symbol being like this fucking big and like as thick as your finger. <laughs> it sounds awful. So we can put that, and that would be our. Now here things change up, right? We have a difference in sound because unlike that intro where the, the hi-hat that we're riding on, on is closed. Now that hat is open. Much better, right? So. If I just mark one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, easy. Now, of course, there's so much argument to be made on the concept of open hi-hats, right? Because a hi-hat, unless you're playing on electric kit like I am, the pedal of a hi-hat isn't just on or off. You know, you can push down tightly on your pedal and have really tight hi-hats. You can lift up just a little bit and remove a lot of that deadness to them. You can open it just a little bit more, so you get a little bit of rattle. You can open it a bit more than that, so you get a lot of sizzle between the two of them. You can open it so there's a decent gap between them, then you can get a lot of fucking noise when you do it. There's no... It, it, it's... it's, <laughs> it's a, What's the word I'm looking for? It's a fader of how open a hi-hat is. So I wouldn't really... To me, that's still almost like a closed hi hat. He's just actually hitting the bastard. They they don't have a lot of um, like a long decay on the sizzle of the two hats, sort of hitting against each other. Um, but just for the sake of differentiation in the transcription, I'm going to notate them as an open hat. Oh, what was my other option? There is another option, isn't there? Yeah, it's the half, which. Sounds like a ride symbol to me. <laughs> I'm gonna bring this over here so it's there if I need it, right? So. Now what I was doing there was I was just listening to the kick and snare pattern, which is one, 
Oh, fuck. Two, one, and two, and that's your bass and snare pattern. Easy enough. Uh, yeah, we'll copy and paste that in here. Then go to the top voice. So we have that same symbol, nasty ass symbol. And then we're going straight to the, let's put it as an open hi-hat. Sounds awful. Uh, like that. Why is, don't do that. Oh, I hate it so much. It, it does what it calls hides useless rests. There's no such thing as a useless rest. <laughs> Rests are always important and they tell us um, information. So hide useless rests in standard notation. Let's take that off. We want to see these rests in here. So at least I certainly do. Right, so now when I do that and beam that together, that looks nice to me. Now I'll just copy and paste that hi-hat. Keep going. Identical pattern here. So we're just copy pasting that. And then. Place three more times and then we're going to have something. Oh, don't do that. We'll have something different in the final bar because that'll be, you know, like a fill that will lead us back to the next groove, right? And that's exactly my point, right? So here. That's closed hi-hat, and that's definitely an open hi-hat. So the different differentiation between this is is a fucker. <laughs> um, how do I get around that? <sighs> Let's just do it like this. Uh, da, 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 da. Put an accent on it, see if that makes it sound different. And then we've got the crash. That's not even, that is literally playing a splash when I do that, isn't it? I'm sure that's playing a splash. Yeah, it's the splash hit. The crash is, is that. The splash certainly sounds better, <laughs> but it's not aggressive enough. It's just terrible crash symbols. Why do you have such terrible crash symbols? That'll do. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do on this song. And now... Same basic pattern underneath. But we don't have that last um, bass drum hit. We take the you know similar groove, but but similar but different, and uh, I'm going to move on because I want to do some of the Neil stuff. But you get the idea. So when I uh, when I play that, two, three, four. In fact, if I put in remove this because I was aware I did that as soon as I did it. Uh, subdivide by four. If I then highlight a few bars, we go markers, compute tempo. It's at 108 BPM. So if I put that 108 marker in. Let me have a listen to this. Should sound alright. That's all right to me. Just awful, <laughs> awful sounds. Now, of course, if you for, nobody uses, it's worth 
coming up on screen to actually do this. Uh, nobody uses, or at least nobody should be using Guitar Pro as a way of uh, sampling what their music is going to sound like when they're composing, okay? Um, I wouldn't recommend doing that. If you are going to use Guitar Pro as a composing tool, use it as a composing tool. Don't use it as a production tool. And um, Guitar Pro, it seems, uh, Aerobus Music, it seems like that's something that they think that their software will be able to do, and it just doesn't. It does a terrible job at that. What I would recommend is exporting the MIDI from this and importing that into your door and then using, say, Superior Drummer um, or Easy Drummer or whatever, whatever your, you know, BFD, whatever your drum sample library is. If I had this groove played using my, probably not that one, um, oh, if we can't, that would probably be appropriate. Pop Rock. I mean, I've not really put any time into deciding what which of these I like. Let's go Arena Ambience. I'm sure I just clicked. There we go. I mean, that is that's a lot of reverb, right? Oh, you can't see it. Sorry, that's a lot of reverb. No one needs that much reverb, that's ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, you know, having the MIDI, using the MIDI to trigger actual drum sounds, actual drum samples, um, would be a better use of your time than getting Guitar Pro. But having said that, just to check our work, if I go one, two, three, four, So, you know, tempo fluctuates a little bit, or it could be a case of this is really should be like 108.2 or something like that. But anyway, you get the idea. This is totally serv serviceable, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to open a new track. Let's go drum kit. Uh, create. Kill me. <laughs> and we are going to go to the Tom Sawyer drum track. But before that, I'm going to read your comments. Talk to y'all. Talk about Rush. Aerosmith drummer and Joey Kramer. Okay, cool. Robert Murray Smith's channel. He shows you how to make a DIY storage battery. Cool. <laughs> I know that wasn't aimed at me. And did Lucas hear that advice? That is a good question. <laughs> right, so when we listen to uh, Rush's Tom Sawyer, the isolated drum track, it sounds like this. Great playing, right? But not complicated, certainly not complicated. Uh, from a production perspective, listen to the reverb on that snare. He hits the snare here. You can still hear the reverb for the snare around here. And it's really interesting to hear that um, the sheer amount of reverb that, he, that is on the snare, but the no reverb that's on the kick drum. Yeah, this, this kick drum lasts about this long, whereas the snare lasts for the, about that long, <laughs> which, is, um, which is, yeah, really cool. Uh, that's the magic thing about this, isn't it? Uh, Christian, like it's just so, yeah, perfectly played. Now, in terms of t uh, tempo for this, you could write it as I'm going to write it so we've got eighth notes on the hi hat, so it's going to be more, um, more like half time feel. Yeah. 
Yeah, that would be one, two, three, four, one, two. No, I really enjoyed that. That is, there's this part in here. There, there was something about these kick drums that felt a little bit fumbled. Not wrong, not incorrect, but sounded very human, and I really like that. It was that one, maybe. is dynamic variation between it all which is really cool anyway simple stuff right and as as yeah has already been pointed out by christian yeah this isn't massively complicated especially when you uh come at it from the perspective of the things that we talked about for the last hour or so which is the simplicity of thinking of things in terms of what's your lead hand doing are we playing on a hi-hat? Are we playing on a crash cymbal? Are we playing on the ride cymbal, etc.? What rhythm is it playing? Um, when I was look, going to be looking at the Hotel California, that's kind of cool because the hi-hats are really going... Adding that the extra two notes in there um, meant that you couldn't just take that right-hand bit for granted. Um, in this instance, we are going to um, be doing basically the same thing so now if I put this uh, uh, subdivide this by four we could look at this and we could analyze where the snare and uh, where the bass and snare fall right bass snare bass snare one three two three and one three one two three one three one, two, three, and one. Okay, so we could literally just write that first part out, just in terms of bass and snare drums. Bass on one, snare on three. Bass, snare. Rest, bass, snare. Rest, bass, snare. Bass, snare. So copy, paste, bass, snare. And then we've got this, but there's a tiny little change to it, uh, which is bass, snare bass. Dada. Keep going. Bass, snare, bass, bass, snare. Bass, snare, bass, bass, snare. Now I'm going to talk about why I've wrote it in half time in a second. I can just copy that, right? So there's that intro in terms of the bass and snare pattern. And if I go in, oh, I've done it all in voice one, haven't I? <laughs> so let's copy that, put it into voice two. There we go. It's one in voice one. Now we go to voice one. Okay, yeah. We can talk accent, I guess, but. It's hard to hear because the symbol is so damn aggressively loud. But I'm just going to make the assumption. Ah! One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four.
Yeah, the heel, the heel toe. I've been working on my heel toe, uh, you know, that double double stroke, and um, it's a fucker. <laughs> it's an absolute fucker. I remember watching Steve Smith teach that when I was like, I don't know, 14 or whatever, and just not having a fucking clue how to do that, and now I'm 32, and I still don't, still struggle with that. Yeah, so we just keep that hi-hat throughout the intro. Now, the way I've chosen to notate this... Don't know why that didn't do that, but okay. way I've chosen to notate this would be to notate it at... About 175. This is with a half time feel, so this is thinking in terms of um, this is thinking in terms of the snare falling on just on beat three rather than on the more traditional beats two and four. If you wanted to notate it with that beats two and four feel, uh, your feel would be one, two, three, four. So essentially half the time, um, that would give you your more traditional bass snare, bass snare, bass snare, bass snare, bass bass snare, bass bass snare bass snare bass snare bass um and but it would also mean that that lead hand would be notated using 16th notes and i think at least when i'm playing drums i don't really think ever that my right hand would be going t -t 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 -t. so i preferred to to write it in um write it like this the only other thing that kind of popped out when i was listening to this was this this hi-hat here feels like it's accented. Almost like it's a hair more open that you got from hitting it a little bit harder. But that essentially is your groove there. There's our intro, if you like, to um, Tom Sawyer. Now, I, I would imagine that pretty confidently I should be able to play this along with this. Get it in time. Getting that natural, natural delay. <laughs> Um, anyway, so there's our there's our intro. Not too difficult, right? Let me um, you know, look through these comments. Simple drums can be deceptive, though. People like to give ACDC a bunch of crap for the same reason. If you actually listen to those drums, they're incredibly precise. They are. The funniest thing I ever remember with uh, talking about ACDC is uh, my friend, uh, drummer on the Hellcat album, Lee Costanza. Awesome drummer. Unbelievably good drummer. Um, and he uh, was with a student, and they teach an ACDC song because, you know, beginner student, you've got to learn... Um, You've, you've got to learn uh, easy stuff first. So he's teaching whatever it happens to be. Um, Highway to Hell or Back in Black or a whole lot of Rosie, wherever it happens to be, okay? And the student turns around to Lee and says, what's ACDC's drummer's name? And Lee turns around and says, Phil, which is ironic. <laughs> that always tickled me. <laughs> Laughing at my own punchlines, but it's not my punchline. So, um, yeah. Kick drum that you were digging. Yeah, did that comment. Videos of Jonathan Moffat. Yeah. Uh, let's go with tight. Precise. Yeah. Groovy. Pockety. Let's go with pockety. Uh, those are all drummier videos, aren't they? They're really good. Um, really good. Angus made you pick up the guitar. Slightly open eye out. Yeah, and there's that problem, isn't it, Philip? Like... If only there was a way to notate 48 different toms, and if only there was a, a way to notate different levels of pressure on that hi-hat pedal. <laughs> um, right, so let's keep going. We'll just do the next bit. So 
So same principle, right? I'm going to think bass and snare. Now what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to uh, make sure I've got the right thing up. Yeah, I'm going to copy paste the top part in terms of the bass and drum, uh, the kick and snare pattern. I'm just going to add that part in. You might, you, I'm okay with that, that rhythm, but you might want to put an eighth note with a rest in there. <laughs> oh, awesome. So you're a drum student. Fantastic. Yeah, then you're the guy to really be talking to about this, right? <laughs> um, put on a metronome and played five minutes of groove. We're all flawed. I've been really, because obviously I'm really into country, right? Um, really into country. So I honestly, for the last like couple of days, have just been putting that metronome on and setting a timer for 10 minutes and at a slow speed, just playing a train beat. Gack, Really slow though. One and two and three and four and one and two and one and two and one and two and three and four and one and two and one and two and getting that real country groove on that on that snare drum. And once I'm comfortable with that, then just put in a kick drum on the one, two, and the three and the four to help like pump it, punch it along a little bit. And while it would be so much fun to sit and practice like linear fills around the kit for ten minutes, like that train beat is a fucking money beat, right? And you've got a you've got to be able to play that like a like a pro. Honkler leaves and upside down enters, one and the same person. Who knows? But wish you luck, man. Go for, go for your walk. <laughs> Same here, if you listen to that, that hi-hat there is definitely half open. But yeah, cool. I almost feel like that one is as well. In fact, I definitely feel that one is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to voice one. But I'm going to use accents for it. It's semi-open, but... It's hard to tell what there whether he's playing, uh, you know, crash, symbol, symbols. Sorry, crash, hat, 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 or crash, hat, hat. Does it matter? I don't know. Oh, you fucker! Stop doing that! I just want to copy the fucking bar. Jesus. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And you've got that accent. Bit of sizzle. Now, like I say, I'm putting these in as being um, uh, accents on the the closed hi hat. But if you really wanted to, you could bring up your drum thing and you could use a hi hat half open on these notes you know neither of them sound great because <laughs> it's guitar pro um, <clears throat> rhythm is obviously a key element to music but sometimes naively overlooked I once saw a video of Bumblefoot playing to such a slow metronome and still nailing the rhythm yeah man if you can if you can take like a a rhythm guitar part where you have to play on beat one and then the and of beat three one two three and four one two three and four and of course i'm playing with a shuffle feel if you can do that with a metronome at 40 bpm 
you're a fucking pro. If you can do that with a metronome at 40 BPM, but with the metronome only actually clicking on beats two and four, so your metronome would actually need to be at uh, 20 BPM, <laughs> your sense of rhythm is is unbelievable, unparalleled. And that's when you slow down like that and you have so much more space between the notes, that's when you really get to test how in time you are. And of course there's that uh, classic Victor Wooten exercise where he programs a drum groove to have you know three bars of drums and then a bar of silence. Three bars of drums and then a bar of silence and then you know, seven bars of drums and then a bar of silence and then six bars of drums and two bars of silence and then four bars of drums and four bars of silence and just having you play along to that and lock in so that there's silence but you're still playing and then you're playing have you lost lost sense of where that pulse is can you come back on the one timing like that is is so unbelievably important so uh, i saw something uh, up here it does like it does the same with steady double bass yeah right so there's that first part So similar, I'm going to copy paste the whole thing from here and then I'm going to fix the bass drum pattern. Lost track of where we were. So we've now got um, uh, invoice 2. Our pattern has changed on the bottom right. Ba ba bu ka, bu bu ka, bu 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 ka, bu bu ka, bu 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 ka. And what I've done there is uh, is like a great um, exercise <laughs> in terms of rhythm reading, just for drums. Looking at bass and snare patterns. Bu ka, bu ka, bu ka, bu ka, bu bu ka, bu bu ka, bu ka, bu ka, bu. Oh, I see, yeah. <laughs> Try setting up a metro so it plays three bars of click, one bar of silence. Yeah. Classic. <laughs> Classic. Steve Adler's drumming. He has such a lazy, slightly behind the beat groove. It works so well. Was that not because he was like drunk most of the time? <laughs> That's interesting. Then we have the same as this line, interestingly. Same as this line, right? But the the crash isn't there in that bit he uh uh in voice one in this bit he stays on the hi-hat keep going so we have the exact again same kick and snare pattern here but the uh the crashes are gone now but that's okay. We'll copy paste. So we've got the kick and snare thing, and then I also feel like we don't have the uh, open hi hat there. Fucker, put it in voice one. That's the open hat there. Now you can see I'm using copy and paste to get this the way I want it. Don't want you beaming together though. Got 
copy paste that. The same. Never notice those little hi hat sloshes in this song. It's so tasteful. Oh, yeah. Isn't that the thing, right, though, Philip? When you listen to something like this, um, <laughs> all of those little sloshes, the sizzle that gets thrown in, um, all that thing that makes things so damn classy in the in the full mix, all that stuff just gets lost, and it's such a shame. I think it's something that you pick up on a subconscious level, but you can't really pick out the detail. Uh, another example that I'm going to be talking about um, when I do my monthly stream at the end of the month, we're talking about John Dalmain, who is the drummer for System of a Down. He has so much not metal in his drumming, so much not metal. Uh, the amount of ghost notes that he throws in, in in his metal playing, the amount of uh, times that he does just little buzz hits on on that snare, so you get that rattle um, in the, in the ghosting parts. Uh, that it's just so cool to hear it. And I've listened to that band since I was fourteen years old. Um, they've definitely been a massive impact on my life, and I love them to bits. Uh, but it wasn't, you know, I never noticed any of that stuff. But when I hear the drums in isolation, you're like, oh wow, yeah, he's he's really playing like a more. It, it's almost like he might have had some sort of uh, like traditional, um, traditional like marching drumming um, background. I'm not sure what his background is, but he's certainly got some some actual technique going on there, rather than being someone like me who just, you know, boom, ka, boom, ka, boom, ka, boom. That's just really me hitting the drums in the right place rather than hitting them with any sort of finesse or class. It's hitting them rather than how you hit them, you know? Um, so, yeah, it's really cool to hear it in, in isolation like this. Anyway, uh, let's just get this. So, same again for this. If we just listen to what's going on with the bass and snare. Bass, snare, bass, bass, snare, bass, bass. Oh, snare there. Bass, snare, bass, bass, snare, bass, snare, bass, bass, snare, bass. Uh, snare, snare, even. So there's no toms in here. We don't need the toms. It's. That's the top. Yeah, yeah, Christian. So that comment about um, learning from from records, fair enough. Um, but when he specifies in that second part, including the jazz albums belonging to his father, that's that's it to me. Like he's got some jazz in his snare drum technique that you like. Another like metal drummer that everybody like looks up to and idolizes. Um, never been a fan of the band, but Vinnie Paul of Pantera, right? I don't imagine there's any of that in Vinnie Paul's playing. Vinnie just fucking hit those drums. Uh, anyway, there's that part. Now against that, you have two different symbols. We could call it high symbol and low symbol to me, because one of them is it's got a lot more high end frequency to it, one of them is a bit lower. Um, and it's high, low, high, low, high, high, low, high, low, high. In terms of notating that, it would be nice if we had options. It would be nice if we had a bunch of symbols in Guitar Pro. But I think we probably do have enough symbols to get us by. We do have... <laughs> we do have Crash High. And we have Crash Low. So if I put those in... Uh, da, 
It's going to sound dreadful, but... I'm just, if there's anything else in there. Now this is where being a drummer would come in, like being an actual professional drummer, someone that played drums really well. Because <laughs> when it comes to things like that, like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pretend, guys. I'm not a great drummer. I'm a passable drummer. I can get by if I need to. Rec if I, if there uh, like a uh, an ACDC covers band gig came up, I could get by. <laughs> um, if a rock covers gig came up, I could get by. If you needed me to play some Rush, probs not right. <laughs> um, so when it comes to feels like that. In my mind, it's still a case of uh, understanding the breakdown between the kick and snare and the and the patterns that happen there, because they're like I think those are being pitched accents, if you like, and then against that, the sizzle that comes from cymbals. We're not having to worry about toms there, but again, those would be pitched accents, right? So when I hear this, that's what my brain jumps to. I don't think so much at any point like, is the left foot doing anything here? Is the left foot using that hi-hat pedal to give give you the you know, pedal hi-hat sound? Um, I don't hear it in there anywhere, thankfully. There's some flams on the snare there, but no, uh, still no toms, right? But still, you know, this will play, right? Just gonna sound like ass because it's guitar pro. Because <laughs> guitar pro sounds like shit. Always oh, sounds like shit. Right now, I'm go I'm gonna head off in a second, guys, because I've been streaming for an hour and a half, and I said I'd only be an hour to the wife. Um, when I listen to that, just listening to this, uh, it was before that, was it? Where are we up to? Bar twenty six. We could notate just the kick and snare on this, right? So just in terms of the, the kick and snare pattern there, see if it repeats. Nope. Let's just keep it going then. face he has actually hits the uh, hits it there
What was this? There's a, uh, a Tom in there. What are we playing? It's lower than that. But I'll, I'll put that. Uh, so obviously, you know, it's Tom's. None of them are going to be ideal in Guitar Pro. Well, that could be another snare hit, to be honest. For these, let's put flams on them. So, without dealing with the the ride over the top of it and the symbols that we um, symbols that we put in it, um, just going from this. Now, to be completely honest, over the top of that, I'm not going to bother because I want to leave, but... Honestly, you could literally just put uh, Invoice 1, you could put your Crash. Sounds terrible, but let's go with that. Um, and then you could put a Ride Symbol, which in here is... Why it makes it staccato, I don't know. It's gone. So I could literally just put that. It's not what he plays, you know. There's a little bit more, t t some, some double strokes that he plays on there. Um, but just from a perspective of like, if you wanted to put a cover together of this song, and you wanted to program the drums, um, this is going to do an absolutely fine job of that. An absolutely fine job of that. If I just listen to it from the top. We're in the ballpark. <laughs> so there you go. Hopefully that should give you a better understanding of how to go about writing out drums in Guitar Pro. Um, the Crash is a dark, darker, thicker X. You're absolutely um, correct, mate. You do, you do that. Looks like this. It just also sounds like shit. Because everything sounds like shit in Guitar Pro. I just keep saying it, right? Everything sounds like... <laughs> Almost comes across like I'm not a fan of Guitar Pro. <laughs> anyway, guys. Um, yeah, that's me for this evening. But thank you very much for tuning in. And um, not just for people that have tuned in maybe to learn something from this. But guys like Philip, 
who you clearly know stuff about drums, man, and the fact that you're sitting here not just, um, you know, talking drums with me, not a drummer, <laughs> um, but giving me your input on things and helping people out in the comments is awesome. We had some people earlier, Mind7 Sharp 5 was talking to guys about uh, drum kits and the recommending uh, kits for beginners. I, f I fucking love this community for that. You guys absolutely rock. So continue to help each other out, continue helping me out, and uh, yeah, we'll keep having a good time. Lastly, Big thank you to support us over on Patreon. You can find me in the link in the, in the description. You can support me over there for as little as $1. Um, it's all very much appreciated, all the support I get over there. So thank you very much for your love, kindness, and support. You can also head on over to Amazon and check out my new books. Or sorry, my books. Let's do the new one in a second. Uh, you'll find lots of books over there, I guess. But the most important one would probably be... Ta-da! 100 Sly Licks for Blues Guitar. Came out a couple of days ago. Go and grab yourself a copy of that. Um, help me get to number one on Amazon because I like having all these bestsellers to my name. And I couldn't do it without your love and support. So thank you very much for checking my work out. And of course, some VPix. So, um, any, any last comments from anyone? Minus 7 Sharp 5, you're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. It's not just... Um, it's not just apes. He's he's bouncing a little more on it. He's doing some fun stuff on that ride. I didn't want to take the time to do it because I've been on for a lot longer than I planned to be. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I just the the point of me putting the quarter notes on the ride there was more about just saying, look, it's actually very easy for you to get the detail of the song, which is that kick and snare pattern. That's the thing that people are going to um, think of as being the the defining uh, part of the groove, right? And then whatever you put over the top in that lead hand is just helping to orchestra, helping to pad it out a little bit. So, um, yeah, anyway, thanks to the stream. You are very much welcome, Christian. Thank you very much for your input. Really appreciate it. Uh, upside down, thank you very much. Much love, Philip. Much love, Mind7 Sharp 5. Much love, Upside Down again. <laughs> minus seven sharp five you are of an interesting character and you make me laugh because in a space of 30 in the space of 30 seconds you've gone from once i get old enough and then your previous comment was uh that's how i used to play it back in the day <laughs> you can't have it both ways <laughs> uh asa um You've, you've picked a really bad time, but the answer is research what the guitarist tends to play in and then listen for open strings when you are transcribing their stuff because open strings are a dead giveaway. Um, but there's no sh there's never going to be a surefire way to give you an answer to that one, unfortunately. Um, anyway, yeah, much love, guys, and I will see you for another stream at some point in the future. Um, well, it'll be in a couple of days, I'm sure. Much love. <laughs> Goodbye.